Hello, good morning, guys. This is Kony with Gautam. As we learned in the past, we learned a lot about JavaScript. So now let's add more puzzle pieces to this puzzle. Now today we're going to learn about Boolean logic. First of all, what is Boolean logic? Boolean logic helps us define if it's true or if it's false using various symbols. Let's use that in code and find out what it is by using code combat. So we go to code combat and now let us get to work. So now let's use the endangered bull to learn Boolean equality. Let's play. Let's equip our latest gear to have a better chance of winning. Let's stop the music. And now, I think we are good enough with my best material. Attack Thor and Munchkin, retreat from ogres. So, now today we're going to learn about Boolean. So, what is Boolean? Boolean are symbols which help us learn if it's true or false. Like you see here, this is the equal symbol. Equality, Boolean equality. That's why this is called Boolean equality if enemy type equals munchkin so if there's no munchkin this statement could be proved as false if there is a munchkin it would be true and he would execute hero attack enemy so now let's see how he navigates through the space he attacks the munchkin by prioritizing their type and using boolean to understand so now Thrower. So he uses the thrower code because this turned as true. Now it's false. Then there's an ogre. So he runs back into the village because we don't have anything to do with an ogre. But unless I could kill it, but we cannot. So here is Boolean equality just using the equal sign. Now let's get this a little more up into range using blind distance get this load and let's see how blind distance has an action the village is too quiet looks like it's an ambush the blind wizard is your only friend but he's a really powerful mage you will be a spotter for him watch the ogres and say the distance for any incoming the wizards power are limited use them only when you see an ogre Use the prefined function that the nearest enemy and return distance is zero if no enemy. You can use the function result in your corner store in a variable. Let's check how this goes. Function nearest enemy distance. Enemy equals zero find nearest enemy. Variable result equals zero. So in result there is zero things. So the value is empty in result. If enemy, if there's an enemy, the zero will become to hero distance to enemy and he'll return the result. And guys, I'll talk about returns in the next video. So please hold on for your questions about returns to the next video. Now, let's go to the main part where he does the stuff. While true, variable distance equals hero nearest enemy distance so he's using the whole function data into a variable if distance is greater than zero hero says distance let's see how this works and now you see how the ogres are ambushing from different sides but we say the distance and our wizard guy kills them so he's killing them off And he kills them all, and they all die. And now, let's go back to the map and look for more Boolean logic levels. Now, let's go to Salted Earth, the Boolean Ore. Now, we're going to learn about Ore Boolean. Now, let's play. Gather all the coins, defeat all the ogres. So... 
This level introduces the concept of the Boolean OR. Placing an OR between two Boolean values will return a single Boolean value, much like plus takes two numbers and spits out another number. OR returns true either before it's true or false if they are both. So guys, this is what I was talking about in the beginning. Booleans help define true or false. Let's check all this in action. Now let's check out the code. While true, enemy equals you will find your enemy. If enemy type equals munchkin, so we're using the equality and the boolean or mixed together. So now let's look at it. If enemy type equals munchkin or if it's thrower. So if it's a munchkin, if it's a thrower, he has the power of his sword to attack it. But if it's an ogre, ogres are very big guys. So you cannot attack them. Or burls. Burls are very my guys. Just touch them and you'll be dead. So now let's, we saw the attacking part, now let's look at the item part. Item equals hero find nearest item. So now we're using equal and or again. If the item type equals or or gem, because we don't want to get these type of poisons over here and die. So now we're going to move at the xy pose, variable pose equals item dot position, variable x equals pose. Up item position dot x, variable y equals item position dot y, x, y. So now let's check how this thing goes. And now see, he has he has a munchkin, he executed the code, he killed the munchkin. He saw a coin, got it, and it's already done. So see, as you see, the enemy is assigned to the burrow because he's the nearest enemy, but he's not doing anything because his code doesn't mention the burrow. And that's a burrow. Let's keep going. And now you look how he's not running to poison when he sees it because poison is also an item but he doesn't want it as per our code and now we saw all of this and now let's take a step even further from salted earth to spring thunder we just now did we just now did solid earth and now let's check it again. No, sorry, we just now did solve it. Now let's go to Spring Thunder. Collect three coins, collect three gems. Now, this is the variable, this is the Boolean AND, which it only happens if both of them are true. If both of them are not true, it's not. But in all even if one of them is true, we'll execute. But if one of them is true and one of them is not, it won't execute. So now we understand Boolean. And so now, while true, item equals hero find nearest item if item type equals coin and if the item value is two. Because two is only the silver coin value. And we don't want to go running to bad stuff. If item type is gem and the item value is 10, because now we're going to have a lot of thunder having, happening around. So we don't want to get in those lightning coins which have a more better value. So let's stick to the value 2 and gems. Let's stick to the value 10. Let's see how this thing goes. Now look, he goes running and look at the lightning. He gets the items and now he, he looks for not electrified items. Look, see, that's electrified. And I don't know the value of that, but it has a bad value. And look at that gold coin. Gold coins are values of three, but they're electrified. So you could die. So look at the code, how it made him very smart, not going into lightning and dying. And here's our present, just working, making a fire. And notice one more thing. We don't go running to mushrooms, which kill us. And we have a deer over here. And we have a forest. And success. Three coins, three gems. Now, let's go a little bit more to usual day. And now let's put my favorite one. And my favorite piece of armor. My favorite shield. And, and, and. Defeat the ogres. 
collect records and write statements. While using the AND operator, it's if the first condition on the left of the AND is false, the second condition on the right will never have executed. You can use this advantage. Your code may have an error. And a code with AND will not cause an error. So this is our advantage. AND sometimes help us debug our code for us. Let's look at it. Variable enemy equals zero find nearest enemy. If there's an enemy AND, if the enemy type is munchkin, your attacks to munchkin and extend the item if item and item type equals coin hero moves to the pose and the peasants are finishing the tower the cows are grazing one person is planting plants and we have a brawler see now since we didn't mention brawlers in our code he is not going running to brawlers and dying he's just waiting for the correct time and look there's a munchkin he killed it off in a second now look at this guy's conversation, it will be a little bit funny. Let's look at the code and this guy's conversation. But first, mainly, we have to focus on the code, man. So, let's look at the code. And look, see, the brawler is awake, but since the human didn't do any harm to him, he's not doing anything. And he looks for items, and he gets items, and ta-da, he gets his items, and it's a success. Now, we go back. Now you learn about boolean doors, boolean ends, and now let's learn more about booleans. But I think that's all the time we have for booleans, and now let's learn about one more special boolean. It's the not boolean. It's used in a lot of code. Let's just open and check any level we like. Uh, let's go check the same levels we just now used. And let's check how the not boolean works in them. Now look, see. If the enemy type equals munchkin. So if we keep this thing, it does not. If the enemy type does not equal munchkin. So he would go flying to a burl right now. So you guys were thinking, how what would the burl do? You have the chance to look at it now. Now he doesn't sh attack the munchkin because he doesn't like munchkin. And since it's not, it since it's it since it is a munchkin, he's not gonna attack it because. If enemy type does not equal munchkin, let's keep equals and check what happens. He kills the munchkin in a shot. So now let's change this into a brawler. No, sorry. Not a brawler, it's a brawl. Now let's check what he does. First. First. Let's ask him to move 12 on 12. He moves on 12 on 12 and then he sees the burrows and next him will attack the burrow. Now he's gonna see the burrow and he's trying to kill it. But he did it. Because it cannot be typed. Because this thing is not even understanding a thing. So let's take out this and let's get back to our normal munchkin code. Munchkin code. And now everything is back to normal successfully. Thank you guys. This is Coding with Gautam. Please like, share, and don't forget to subscribe. This is Coding with Gautam. Signing off.